So this is going to sound super cliche and maybe a bit too glass half full, but if there was ever a loss that was more positive than this one, in other words, a moral victory of sorts, even though I can't stand that term, but this was it. You talk about a game in which you go up against one of the best teams in the league on their home court, you lose one of your best players in DeMar DeRozan for most of the second half, and you lose him around the time the Celtics start taking a big lead. I believe they were up by as many as 16 or 18 at one point in the third quarter. Bulls were even down 14 at the beginning of the fourth, and the Bulls could have easily just folded, said it wasn't their night, they don't have DeMar to close, but no, they kept fighting. They played elite level defense, fighting for loose balls, forcing bad shots. The Bulls were able to get a lot of stops. They cut the lead to five, going on a big run. The Celtics then regained the lead to go back up 12, which you would think would be incredibly defeating, but no, they came roaring right back by going on a lead of their own, not a lead, a run of their own, actually cutting the game to a single possession with less than a minute to go until Zach missed a jumper and the Celtics scored quickly in transition on that three-pointer from Al Horford and never looked back after that. But man, give Zach credit though. He was balling in the fourth quarter, hitting big shot after big shot. He was doing everything out there, just couldn't convert in those last two final possessions, which weren't ideal shots, but you can live with them if you're the Bulls because of the fact that he single-handedly brought the Bulls back into the game. I mean, with the way things were trending and the momentum completely in the Bulls' favor, I actually thought the Bulls were going to come up and steal a win in Boston. It just seemed destined to happen, especially with how things have been going for the Bulls recently. Just felt like it was going to be in the cards to finish the game with a comeback win, but hey, it wasn't meant to be. But what I'll say is, and I tweeted about this after the game, the Bulls played hard. They competed throughout, and they did so against one of the best teams in the NBA. And that's really all I want to see. I've said so many times, I don't mind if the guys lose as long as they give consistently good effort for the whole 48 minutes, and they did that tonight, which is not something you could say to start the season. Now, talking about Zach Levine, I mean, first and foremost, great to see the continued improved performance from him. Didn't shoot the ball particularly well tonight from three, but it's his aggressiveness and getting to the rim, that quick first step, that shifting mobility to get around his defender to slash at the basket, that's all back. Like, clearly his knee is no longer ailing him and he's getting his stride back. And in the fourth quarter, when no DeMar DeRozan, Zach said, all right, now it's my time. It's my time to shine again, and shine again, he did. Again, didn't hit those biggest possessions, which was unfortunate, but he brought the Bulls back to make it a game, also with some big shots from Vucevic as well. You know, Billy Donovan recently commented to the media, I can't remember if it was after the last Bulls game or if it was pregame for this one, that he said that he would like to see Zach putting up 10 to 15 threes. He doesn't mind if he's doing that as long as he can read the game and what's going on. In other words, assess the situation and know when it's the right shot to take. Probably took a few too many tonight, like the man put up 13 threes and only hit four of them, but there were quite a few that just rimmed out so you can live with those shots. But even with the subpar outside shooting, he still finished the game with 27 points on 10 for 24 shooting, seven rebounds and six assists, and also only had one turnover in 42 minutes, which is pretty solid to see for Zach to take care of the ball like that, especially with how much he was handling the ball at the end of the game. You know, the Bulls as a team didn't shoot the three ball all that well, 12 for 35. Pat continues to be the most reliable three-point shooter, and he keeps upping that volume, which has been great to see. He also did a solid job on Jason Tatum tonight. I know it doesn't necessarily look like that in the box score, but he was forcing Tatum to his weak side, making him put up difficult shots or passing up to another player. Pat finished the game also with 10 points, 2 rebounds, and 3 steals. And then Vucevic keeps stringing together these good games, and it's no wonder the Bulls are also performing better as a result of it. 21 points on 9 for 15 shooting, 3 for 6 from 3 to go along with 13 boards. Vooch has been the Bulls most efficient player over the last five games, which is saying something considering the type of performances we have seen from Zach and DeMar. Talking about the three ball though, Kobe White really could have used his outside shooting off the bench tonight, which has been great. It's been a great weapon for the Bulls as of late, but Kobe could not get his stride going one for seven from the floor, 0 for five from three. Again, always goes back to Kobe and his lack of consistency as a player that has always made Bulls fans question whether he's gonna take that next step or not. The other thing I'll say about this game, and I kind of already alluded to this earlier, the Bulls, again, they play with great energy and effort and really made the Celtics work hard to generate offense for being the number one ranked offense in the league, but they were at times a little out of sorts, a little out of control, 
roll with the way that they were running their own offense. Now, I was thinking that as I was watching the game and jotted it down in my notes to talk about, but then when I looked at the box score and realized the Bulls actually only had seven turnovers in total as a team, which is one of their lowest of the season, I don't know why, but it just seemed like they were turning the ball over more with how up and down the game was going. Still, a very fun game to watch. Seeing it go back and forth like that and seeing the Bulls go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the defending Eastern Conference champions was exciting. It was annoying to see Grant Williams have a big night on offense, which kind of speaks to the Bulls' lack of size when going up against a team like Boston that has multiple bigs who can score. But uh, hopefully that's something that will be addressed at the trade deadline. That's the other thing, by the way, that I was going to add that made this loss okay was the fact that I hope it doesn't give the front office this false sense of security that, well, see the team is playing a lot better now. Continuity wins over everything. Like, no, there are still a lot of aspects about this roster that need to be fixed, and you're going to need to address those before the trade deadline, before it's too late. I think winning a game like the Celtics, going on a four-game winning streak, that might have pushed that notion a bit aside. And even though we hope everything will be okay with DeMar, which it sounds like, you know, he hurt his quad, he's going to be okay though, when in reality it looked a lot more serious given it was a non-contact injury. The gut reaction for Bulls fans after being scarred by Derrick Rose is it's going to be a season-ending injury. Luckily, it doesn't sound that serious. He stayed in the game for a second, then he was taken out, didn't return, but then after the game he spoke to the media and mentioned it was just his quad contracting and he couldn't move it and said it was nothing crazy and that he'll go treatment for it tonight, tomorrow, and take it day by day. The good news is, though, the Bulls are about to go through their easiest stretch where they'll play the Wizards, the Thunder, the Warriors, likely without Steph Curry, and then the Pistons. So a lot of winnable games, as long as the Bulls don't play down to their competition. But either way, I'll have some content out this week aside from just the post-game videos. Also free to check out my NBA channel and One Hoops if you haven't already. Link to that is in the description. Be sure to subscribe to this channel as well. Thanks for tuning in, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.